free training school up um, in Bradford. And we've been doing some interviews today with the guys. We've been learning about the installations of their Colchester machines. Uh, we've been talking to the lecturers here kind of exploring what happens with apprenticeships these days and it took me right back to the early 1990s which was when I did my apprenticeship at Rolls-Royce in Bedford and in fact I intend, uh, attended the Bedford training group which was then very much like this place um, with a lot of conventional machines as well as machines with um, digital readouts, fabrication kit across the board and I used to go in once a week and, um, and try and get to grips with the machines and what they did to make components. Now today I'm going to take myself right back in time and I'm actually going to get my hands on this Colchester machine here. This is a Colchester student and uh, I'm going to turn a piece of aluminium. Now I'm not going to do anything too complicated, I'm just going to turn the diameter, face it and then I'm going to part it off and these are all operations that back in the day um, I used to encounter on a daily basis and used to have to set the feeds and speeds and I'm going to go right back to those days and I'm going to do everything from scratch. We've got full authority here, we've gone through all the health and safety checks so there's not going to be any, any concerns or issues about that. So the first thing I need to do is I'm not going to make it easy for myself, I'm going to, I'm going to use a four jaw chuck instead of a, a, a three jaw here so I'm going to take this um, chuck off, I'm going to have to reach by and just grab one of these chuckies. And this was always one of the, um, the standard jokes in the machine shop. It used to be a case of leaving your chuck key in the chuck, pressing go and causing carnage over the other side of the factory. It's not going to happen today, I hope. There's actually it's kind of a mechanical system on here as well, which you'll be used to if you use these machines now, which I didn't have, which is where you have to, um, the position you have to ratchet the, the, the Allen uh, key into in order for it to be locked or unlocked. So again, reassuring that you've got the chuck on secure. Which doesn't obviously work, so I can't get And this is where I'm going to have to seek a little bit of assistance from my colleagues. But, so I'm going to take this chuck off now. So this is your three jaw chuck, Pratt Bonard chuck. I'm then going to essentially just check the, the faces. You might do this with a bit of rag or a bit of cloth. Quite heavy this. Go around and double check that I've got them in the right position. Now that is a quick change chuck. What was that? About two and a half minutes probably. Right, okay, so now we're going to open up the chuck drawer. And this is where the real skill comes into machining. How quickly can I centre this? So I've got my bar in there. I've got my bar in there. Obviously it's not a great fit at the moment. Just going to work my way round, get a nip. And now what I need to do, well look at that, that is nowhere near centre. So I'm going to have to uh, go and see my friend again and just get a DTI clock, I'll be back in two seconds. So now I've got my DTI clock, this is where uh, we can now try and centralise this uh, bar as quickly as possible. Onto the bar, we've got a touch, we've got a zero. do me that's close enough for me now what we need to do is put a tool in the tool well, we need to take the clock off first take the clock off part tool post. really now what I should try and do is get this as central as possible which again is a, all this all this stuff just comes flooding back to you when you get back on the machine this is where I used to think, what can I get away with at this point? Do I really have to get it in the central position? Well, yes, because then it will leave a pip. So let's... Look at that, that's pretty cock on straight away. So now we're going to start thinking about speeds. Pull my um, guard over, and I'm going to start looking and selecting what sort of speeds and feeds I need. Now I'm going to hazard a guess, it's a bit of aluminium, so Let's go for 2,000 
500 RPM, which is the fastest I believe this will go. Um, I think that's probably a bit too fast, so I'm going to slow it down. It's so easy to go from gear to gear here. It's uh, like driving an old Ford Cortina. Right. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm now going to use this to edge in. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. And there you'll see, I'm taking a nice little cut the front face. I think I'm taking probably feels all right. Wow, what a uh, moment of deja vu here. Go right off to the pit. There we go. And we, we should really come back out and then back off. And I'm going to stop the speed. That is a pretty good surface finish. I'm pretty pleased with that so far. Right, now it's, now it's on to the OD. Got this horrible feeling something's going to go bang. Just want to get that polished finish. I think I've got the speed about right. Just trying to get the feed rate. I'm not going to use the automatic feed here. I, don't, I really don't want to... Um... These always used to be the easy bits. Turning the ODs. Drilling. IDs. Facing. The worst bit is always parting off. It is a terrible trouble parting parts off. Okay, so we've now successfully turned our diameter. Now, of course, this is now going to be completely concentric. Uh, pretty good surface finish on there too. Now, this all this leaves me now to do is to part this off. As I said earlier, this is, the, this, this is one of the worst operations to do manually. Everything has to be correct. I've got to say, using this machine in. Um, feeling that the sort of mechanics behind it, it feels very solid and, and uh, a little bit different to some of the older tech or the older machines I used to use. Certainly this tool post is very quick and easy to set. Okay, so we're down to about 180 now on the speed. Again, I'm doing this, oh that's probably way too slow actually. I'm doing this all from memory. 370. Let's go up one more. 540. 540, ready? Okay, let's go with this one. Select. Now the key to parting off is you want to get that stringy swarf, just like that. And you can feel it. When you're parting off, you can feel it in the, in the grip of the uh, hand wheel. This was always something that you just have to concentrate so... Uh, so much in order to make sure if you just pushed it that little bit too far you'd have a horrendous bang so we've got a nice parting motion here pretty soft this material um, I'm quite confident that I've got the right speed and I literally just turned up here today was not expecting at all to get my hands on a machine like this but I've got to say, um, it's good to do. Almost, oh, we're going to get a bit of wrap around there. I'm going to just take the opportunity to shift some of this swarm. And if I push it a little bit harder, really trying to make that swarm chip. Ah, oh, there we go. Put the chip in now. So I've got to make sure that I don't run out of tool length and uh, have an incident where the um, body of the tool actually, actually I can feel that now it's not feeling that great. I think we're a smidgen too high. Just gonna... This is the sort of operation that on a, on a CNC machine is done in, in seconds. And, uh, getting a problem here. Counter the problem. My problem is, is that the tool too high so as I'm going in I'm, I'm, I'm going above the center of the, of the diameter which means I'm, I'm, I'm almost sort of doing that so I've got to you've got to get it perfect you've got to get it right in the middle well it comes 
to a point in this uh, program where I'm actually going to I'm actually going to call this passing off operation a grooving operation because I think I've got so far. that I'm really not confident about going any further without having a, a bang. I can feel it now. I might just have one more go at just lifting it up slightly. Here we go, last chance. That might have been a bit of hard material. Yeah, we're quite nicely again now. I think it's as you get closer to the centre of the part, you really have to work that. Feed, and you can feel it biting sometimes. I think we're getting there. A further cut to open the width of your groove for the parting. Yeah, making quite a pretty shape here. Most of the times in my apprenticeship days and beyond, I was cutting cast iron, which is a very different material to this. You just go home at the end of the day, all that black stuff up your nose and in your ears. Cutting parts like this and materials like this, clearly that isn't going to happen today. Well, that's for a few years. I think we are getting pretty close. Is the camera ready for this? And there, my friends, is the finished turned part. Well, I'd like to think so. Simple facing, turning, parting off. I didn't think I was going to get to the end of that parting off operation. Um, great to get back on a machine like this. It really does make you want to get get back onto the shop floor sometimes and um, make components. I mean, what I turned there is a nothing, you know, is a nothing part. But you can imagine if you get some really nice components, it is fantastic. Not to just see them made on a CNC, but actually get your hands on the machine and do it yourself. But hopefully, what I have proved to all of you watchers that have been watching for years is that. When we say we're engineers, we might not be the best, but we've certainly had the experience of the machines and we, we can get to grips with them if we need to. It's been it from me here at uh, this training centre up in Bradford. It's been a really good educational day and I think I've made my part even faster than these guys.